Before this trip ends, I want to show you guys the setup and what you can do when you're out portable operating. I might be a little bit obsessive when it comes to doing this, but that being said, there are a lot of different things you can use, resources you can use, so if you're into preparedness and emergency communication, which is a lot of what I like to do, uh, maybe these tips will help you, give you some ideas when you're out visiting someone and you need to set up your radio. Now the place that we're staying at here, there's some field area, but there's not a lot of room in the property and maybe I wanna be more discreet. Now I got permission to do this first of all, and you should always do that. It's, it's the right thing to do. That's the first thing I do when I get to this place is I set up an antenna and get on the radio. Now, unfortunately there's gonna be cars going by and there's an airplane. I'm in the direct path of an airport. That seems to be the curse. I'm using my DX Engineering, the Vibroplex Trail Friendly Infed Antenna that I picked up. I wanna use it for my soda activations and maybe for some parks on the air. I'm really excited about this antenna. And I'll probably be doing some camping videos, some RV camping videos with this antenna as well. I've set up a bunch of other antennas and it's an awful lot of work to put up the antennas that I like to use. But so far, this has proven to be really cool. So what I used in this setup is I'm using an unused empty water barrel. It has some junk on it, little storage. It's just, it's just something that's there, right? And that's what we wanna use. I went and found uh, this one of these orange straps. They're tie down straps. Maybe you have some rope. I didn't have enough twist ties to be long enough to wrap around this barrel for what I'm doing. Depending on the situation, you want something quick, easy, but mechanically sound so that your antenna will stay up if there's some wind. This is the barrel that I'm using here. It's not super heavy, but it's enough to hold this antenna because the antenna is light, the mass is light, the tension, the pulling is not that great, so I don't need something super strong. Could you go overboard? Absolutely, but I can't in this case, so that's what I've done. I've attached my coax cable to the unund that's way up above up here, and that's feeding the radiator element that's going out here into the field. It's only like 49 feet away or so when I paste it off. I haven't measured the length of the antenna yet. Since it's new and I'm on a road trip, I don't have all the things to measure with, but it's pretty close to what that is. The coax feed goes down to the ground and into the garage. Now you wanna prevent your coax from getting smashed when you need to shut your garage. And because this is a heated garage in this particular case, we wanna keep that heat in absolutely. So what I did here is I took a tool, like a wrench, in this particular case, I put a wrench and I laid it on the ground right next to the coax. So when the garage door comes down, it's gonna smash up against that wrench, which is pretty thin, the thickness of my coax. This way I won't have my coax smashed. One of my essential items are the aluminum twist ties, the orange, black, doesn't matter the color. Brighter is better so you don't lose it when you're out activating. I'll usually have two to four of these rubberized aluminum twisty ties. I use two of them to secure to the masts, so I'll put whether it's on a rock, to a tree, or to a ground stick that's going into the ground. Those are invaluable to me to making sure I have a good activation. You don't have to have a rock solid, sturdy mast setup, but you do want to make sure that it doesn't fall over in the wind. And once you do this a few times, you get an eye for what you want to hook up to and what your gear will withstand. And that's another reason for doing stuff like this. The more you experiment, the more that you try, you get a really good idea of what works and what doesn't work. And I think that's the whole idea for me for setting up so often. I'm also a huge fan of paracord, but in this case, I needed something that was rubberized that would stick to the mast and keep that unun from falling down. And so that's what I did. I was able to take a piece of that orange uh, twisty tie, tuck it into the top of the mast to hold it from being pulled away and sliding down, and then wrap the rest of that thing around the mast itself. And that's it. The low end of the sloper is probably about eight feet off the ground, while the far end of the sloper is 21 feet. Now, because this is a new antenna, this NFED, um, one of the things that the instructions say to do, and it's good to read instructions, I don't do it all the time, you wanna tune this antenna to the 40 meter band, the, the part that you're gonna to operate to. And by doing that, you can either trim the, the wire down or you can shorten it and roll it around itself. Now, setting up this antenna, the Vibroplex trail-friendly end-fed antenna, the one that does 10, 20, and 40 meters. I set that up in the yard where we're staying, and I did it in a couple different configurations because, well, one, I needed to tune it. The first thing you need to do with this antenna is tune it for 40 meters. The frequency where you're pretty, pretty much gonna operate, and for me, that was about 7.280. That's where I wanted it. And when you do this and you get the antenna tuned, you're gonna be ready for 10 and 20 meters. Those will become resonant when you set your 40 meter uh, frequency for operating. That's what the instructions say. For me, it proved to be true, at least on this first outing. So uh, further uses will tell, 
and I'll do reviews on that as, as time goes on and let you know how that antenna works. But for a lightweight, simple antenna to use, I found that to be fantastic. The 20 meter band was pretty good. It was under like 1.5. And the 10 meter band was pretty solid flat across the entire band, about 1.2 to 1.5, depending on where I was testing at on this property. Any HF antenna that you set up in different environments is going to react, going to be a little different. The SWR is going to be different for everything around you that's going to affect the antenna. And for that reason, it's really good to set up in different conditions so you kind of get an idea of what's going to bother your antenna and how well that's going to work. Now, I trimmed about two inches off of the antenna initially. And then I decided, well, I don't want to trim all this off because I may want to lower the frequency down to the CW range or you know, maybe even digital mode. So to do that, you're just going to pull back some of the wire. You're going to shorten that wire and wrap it around itself and that will effectively shorten the antenna. And that way later on, you can have that extra length. So for me, the easiest way to keep track of this, if you don't know this, maybe this will help you. When you're trimming an antenna, Keeping it longer means it'll tune to the lower frequency, and keeping it shorter makes it higher. Longer is lower, shorter is higher. That's just how it is. Now the coax I'm using is some really skinny RG58U. I've got about 19 feet of that. That's one of the things I'll take with me on a camping trip, and even soda. It's a little bit heavy for soda, I think, but it's still functional, and it's great for a setup like this. There are a couple of reasons for this uh, Velcro that I put on here. I've taped on a piece of Velcro onto the coax near where the BNC connector is, and, and that's to keep the bundle together when I throw it into my bag and to secure it to a mast when I'm out here, you know, setting up the radio. Let me take you into the garage and I'll show you my setup. It's nothing fancy because, you know, when you're at someone's house and you're visiting, it's not like you're going to get a premium setup. You may be able to operate out of your car or something like that, but here's what I got and let me show you that. What that noise for? S8, S9. In a future video, I'll probably put together a series about what I pack in a bag. What's something that you can take for summit activating or just preparedness operating when you're traveling? The kind of connectors that you might use, the coax, the radios, and where your mindset is when you go to do this sort of stuff. And I believe it is a mindset thing because you have to really want to do this. It is a hobby for me. It's really fun. But it also is about emergency preparedness and being able to communicate with others. And, and it helps you in a bunch of different ways. All right, well, that's going to do it for me. We're out of here. We leave tomorrow. Got to pack up and hit the road. If you got something from this video, click that like button down below. It helps the video, and of course, it does help the channel. And of course, if you're new here, consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you know about future videos that I've got coming out. We'll see you guys next time.